So some time ago in 2016, I looked at GPS devices and how I could record that GPS data onto an SD card and then map it. Now at the time I used Google Fusion tables, um, which were really cool and I liked the way that worked, but it turns out now there's a slightly easier solution. Now, back then I was using just breadboard stuff. And then the next year I planned a, a trip to Snowdon, uh, which is in Wales and it's a, a mountain. So I was gonna go and climb it. And I did, if you recall, there was a video that came out, a 360 degree video that I did. Anyway, I took this with me. This was, uh, I don't know if it's called a Lomo box, but it's certainly made by Lomo. And it's a waterproof box. So it's got this huge heavy catch on it and all the seals you could ever want. <laughs> and nice big foam thing in here, very sturdy, nice big handle on it. And they're kind of expensive. I think it was something like 15 pounds. Anyway, when I went up Snowden, this didn't work. What a pain. So I went for, a, I decided to redo this. I went back and checked my code and I had a few little errors that I'd introduced at some point between it working and then it then going to Snowden. So I um, went for a walk today and tested this out and it's working fine. Now, I think I might like to develop this into a separate board. So let's have a little look at what's inside here. So inside our little Lomo box, we have, first thing we see is the GPS module. Now I've taped everything up with blue painter's tape. And this is just to keep things from shorting out, but also it keeps them in position as well. So the GPS module needs to sort of have some space around it, see some sky generally, um, or at least not have a lot of restriction towards the sky to find all of those lovely satellites. So we've got this sort of planted over here, the wires bent round. As you can see, this wasn't meant to be a permanent solution. It was just meant to be for testing. So underneath here, we've got our four AA batteries in a box. And this isn't the ideal powering solution. I'm gonna go for something else, but it was, it gave me the longest record time because we're just drawing DC power. We're not converting it, so there are less losses. Um, now, we've got a bunch of wires here with tape, so let's just take some of this off. We don't need it anymore. Now we've done the testing. So at heart, this is just an SD card reader, writer, a nano, and our GPS module. Now the GPS module is communicating with the nano via software serial. This one's on pins three and four, I think. And then we've got the uh, I squared C for the uh, the card here. Now, it would be nice to make this an all-in-one solution. And I think you could probably buy them. I haven't seen anything that was affordable. I wouldn't go and say, hey, I need a four pound GPS module and a, I don't know, one pound SD card and a two pound nano and stick them all together. And then essentially I can find myself a, a GPS recording module. I don't think you can quite do that. However, you can just use your phone. Your phone does exactly the same thing. Google will record all of your journeys on your map. But for instances where you don't want to take your phone or you like the fun of rolling your own solution like I do, then this is an interesting approach to take. Power wise, that's heavy. It's a beef of, beefy thing um, to carry around. So a uh, lith little lithium uh, polymer battery would probably do better if you boost up that voltage to five volts. However, the runtime isn't going to be that great. Today, for example, I went on a two hour walk um, around Elston Meadows, which is near me. I've cut off some points so you don't see where I live, but I set off from my house. I walked all the way to the entrance to Elston Meadows, walked around, came back, and this thing was recording for about two hours. So it takes a reading every 20 seconds and saves that on the SD card in a format. Uh, it's called comma separated values. It's a CSV. It's essentially a spreadsheet. Lots of spreadsheet programs will understand it and Google Sheets understands it perfectly. So you can upload it straight to the web. So let's have a look at the new way that you can take your data from here and import it into a Google map very, very easily, which is why I think this actually has become a little bit more accessible now that fusion tables are out the window. Well, they're still around. You just don't need to use them. It's a lot easier just to use Google Sheets. So this is the code that I'm using, V2 GPS plus SD card code. Well, this is sort of a, a recycling of code that I did for not only the high altitude balloon project, but also the uh, trip to Snowden, which didn't work. So this code now works. We're using software serial seven and eight. I think I said three and four before, but I was wrong. So 
uh, we're using pin seven and eight on here. Now, all of this does is rather than using a GPS library, what I'm doing is I'm passing the, G the GPS sentences, the NEMA sentences that come through. So I'm looking for specific sentences. And in this instance, I'm looking for um, the GPGGA uh, sentence. And this gives me all sorts of information about uh, longitude and latitude, um, and also the northern or southern or eastern or western hemispheres. And that will tell me whether it needs to be a plus or minus figure. So uh, I also get the number of satellites, whether it's got a correct fix or not, and also the altitude in meters. Now, this GPS quality is going to be useful for later um, when I look at creating my own board. I may want to uh, have this wait until it gets a fix and then go into a low power mode, which is possible. It's not something I'm doing at the moment just because I'm using four AA batteries means I have an awful lot of power to spare. So I don't need to worry too much about power saving, although it would help with heating as well. So we've got um, functions for converting the latitude and the longitude uh, because the data that comes out isn't data that the Google Maps will understand. So I need to change it to a traditional uh, latitude and longitude rather than uh, what they are, which is, I think it's radians is what it is. So something like that. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done this. Anyway, we go through and rewrite our SD card data. So we're writing it as test2.csv and we're writing in our uh, data string, the first NEMA codes, and then using commas to separate those values and ending the line as well. So this is essentially our loop and it goes through and does this every single 20 seconds and it will look for that specific GPGGA sentence. So we're going to find it in the uh, software serial data, go through, convert everything, and then write it to our SD card. Now on the, um, the data that comes out, that's what this is here. I've uploaded it to Google Sheets already. You can just uh, use the file picker to do that. Um, and in this spreadsheet, I'm recording time, latitude, longitude, the fix quality. So one, uh, zero, one, and three. Um, the number of satellites in view at the time it's recorded and the altitude in meters. Now you can see I've got quite a few um, records here and they were done every 20 seconds. So um, the ones, if you include the ones I've deleted to not show you my journey there from home, then um, it recorded just over two hours. Now we can go to um, a web page called google.co.uk forward slash my maps and provided you're logged in, you will be able to create your own map. So I've done it in the past. Here's the high altitude balloon. And then when I took a trip to New York for work, I mapped out some of the locations we were filming in. Um, and we can create a new map. And what's brilliant about this is that we can just import our data from our clock. So if I click on recent there, our clock are from our uh, GPS data. So I can just click walking GPS test and click go. And this is going to pull in all of those um, titles that I put in. So we've got, I want to bring in time and I think I'd like to bring in altitude as well. Um, if actually we can bring them all in, it doesn't matter. Um, but they won't all, oh no, we can't bring them all in. Okay. Well, we'll choose altitude, time and altitude as well. Ah, oh, no, I can't. Okay. So I can bring in time, latitude and longitude. That's fine. Choose the titan title of your markers. So let's choose time so that we know what, what it is and click finish. And then if I scroll in, you can see this is my route. So not very big, obviously it's a, it's a fairly short route. So I started up here. Let's change our map style. Shall we? There's certainly a way to do that somewhere. Our base map. Let's change it to a nice satellite view. So you can see that the journey started just up here, 12.39 and 42 seconds. And then the next marker is 12.40 and 02. 
and then the next one and the next one and it continues like that so we've got recording data recordings of data all the way around here which is brilliant and then we come across ourselves here go around and then back again um, and so it's relatively easy to pull this data in now it's it's not quite the same as the Google Fusion one where you could draw a line instead. So, um, but there's a lot to play around in in here. You can um, you can sort of style the data by uh, some of the information you brought in. So perhaps if it's high, you can give it a different color. If the altitude is higher, um, this of course isn't in 3D, so you're not seeing that altitude data. But the Fusion tables would let you do that. But this is a super super simple way of bringing in data. And I really like it. I think it's actually, it's more useful than the fusion tables, mainly because it's so quick to do. You just put your data into your table, you cut out any rogue data. So those ones where perhaps you don't have a fix, get rid of those. And then you just go to my maps, add a new map and drag that data in and it does it for you, which is absolutely fantastic. So yeah, I I'm, I'm, think I'm gonna look at creating my own board uh, designing it with uh, some low power stuff in mind. So we'll, I'll look at how we can use the one of these modules, the, the 6M. You can send it uh, some information over the serial port to tell it to go into a low power state. Now, once it's got a fix and, uh, and you start again, it's called a warm start. So you can get your first fix on the GPS and it will go into a low power state. And then the next start is a warm start. But from a cold start, that's where you completely shut off. It'll take a while to get another fix. In this scenario, I'm doing it every 20 seconds. It almost doesn't really matter. I might as well just have it on constantly. It draws about 60 milliamps when running. So it's not a huge amount of current to be drawing. If you've got something like a 1000 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery, then you're going to get maybe 10, 10 hours out of that. So uh, I think it's I think it's pretty reasonable um, but if you want to do low power stuff for a, a lot longer time span then you certainly could do and use some of the low power stuff i'm recording every 20 seconds if you did it every 15 minutes then you'd want to put it into a low power state and i think i'm going to design mine with that in mind and then we'll come back to it well anyway this was only uh only a bit of a an update to this to say that it's something I'm still really interested in and I'm going to develop the code a bit more. It's never going to be a library. I don't really like the libraries that are out there. I like this reading the string directly because it's very transparent. I understand what's going on. All right. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed that and I'll speak to you all soon.